What a great group of children. Very exciting to see so many going to Sunday school. The rest of us get to tackle those two Bible readings under the sermon title, Do You See What I See? So now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. It was the fact that we had a little bit of money left in our flexible spending account to either use or lose in a matter of days that got me started on this idea. Those here on Sundays haven't witnessed the end result of my notion, but if you're at church during the week, you've likely seen me wearing them. I'm talking about a spare pair of bifocals. Given that glasses are necessary for me for pretty much anything I do, I decided that spending this money on a second pair would be a good idea. So for a very reasonable price, I was able to get these fashionable numbers. I know, they're a little on the bold side. They don't hide away in my face like these rimless kinds do but I really, really love them. Not because they're kind of hip, that's what my kids tell me, but the reason I love them is the glass is so big (laughs) that I have this full panorama of everything around me. In other words, I see clearly the things that I would otherwise miss. And seeing what I'm intended to see is a beautiful thing. Now, the kind of spectacles that I have are akin to two magnifying glasses stuck on the edge of my nose. Not a terribly glamorous image. But if I didn't wear this particular prescription, my vantage point would be distorted. All of which reminds me of today's readings. As we complete our series stewards of God's love. For our texts are like a prescription for what we need in order to see life clearly and completely, seeing what God intends for us to see. We've been tracing the shape of the cross as we we have engaged the topic of stewardship noting first that God comes down by creating us and all things, and God comes down as Jesus so that we might know the fullness of God's love. Then after we went down last week, we looked within to discover what God has created in each of us, our resources and our gifts, down and in, together, both on the same axis. They form and underscore so far a line, the relationship between God and ourselves. And that's how stewardship begins. But it's today, as the movement goes out, that we form a cross. Today, we complete the image. Our texts from Isaiah and Matthew come together to help us determine the proper prescription for our spiritual lens. Isaiah's audience came from the 8th century BC, and that was a prosperous time for Israel. They were thriving, and everything was relatively stable in that period, and life was good. So the people's gifts to God began to reveal a complacency. They wanted to please God so as to keep the party going just as it is. So they were thinking only along that single line between God and their very materially successful selves. Well, Isaiah tells this group that they need a new set of glasses because they're not seeing what God wants them to see. In fact, God says God's not going to even bother looking up until they start looking out. 
until they seek justice for the other, until they begin to rescue the oppressed, until the people view their neighbors in this new way and share the blessings they receive from God, their living and their loving will be incomplete, fuzzy, distorted, unfaithful. Turning to Matthew, we just read an excerpt from a parable in which a judge named the Son of Man is separating people into two groups, much like a shepherd separates sheep and goats. And today we read the part about the sheep, the sheep who, according to the parable, have perfect vision when it comes to seeing God. The sheep have discovered the joy of being stewards of God's love so fully that loving their neighbor is organic. It's part of who they are. They saw in their neighbor in need what God intended them to see, a brother, a sister, also loved by God and also part of the family of God. And the feeling of compassion, it was so natural, so compelling, that they didn't even think of it as unusual. When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? When were you thirsty and we gave you something to drink? See, to these sheep, it's an involuntary response to reach out and love. That's what happens when God's Spirit so fully permeates us. It's like breathing in and breathing out. You can't do one without the other. Receiving God's love, then being within God's love and seeing what God has done within us, it can't help but be shared. Love come down. Love grown within. And then love sent out. The shape of the cross the shape of never-ending love. Yes, stewardship is all about love. I have witnessed what happens right here at Christ the King when we share as God intends us to share. And I see a beautiful thing. A couple of weeks ago, 21 of our women attended a retreat at Luther Springs, the Lutheran camp in North Florida. Everyone else came in similar groups to ours, except one woman. She had Googled Christian Women's Retreat, and this one came up. So she registered, all by herself, not knowing a soul. The weekend theme was Garden Getaway. So you get the theme. We met in garden groups for our small groups. We discussed the growing seasons in our lives. And then our morning prayer partners were blossom buddies, randomly assigned, intended for just five to ten minutes at the beginning of the day. Well, one of our own Christ the King ladies was assigned to this solitary participant whose husband, it turned out, is dealing with an incurable disease. Her son is addicted to drugs. She felt alone, like no one was listening. Well, that blossom buddy relationship intended for the morning went on to blossom for both of these ladies because our Christ the King sister saw a need and the other sister was in need and both were blessed by sharing God's love. I learned after the weekend was over without any fanfare or sense of martyrdom that our sister in Christ skipped the activity she had planned to do because she figured out what God had intended for her for that weekend to listen, to pray, as long as her sister in Christ needed it. What of you? I'll give you another example. Last month, we talked one Sunday about the Ebola crisis that is devastating communities in Africa. 
We don't see these brothers and sisters firsthand experiencing the sickness, the anguish, and the grief. But when we put on those special spiritual lenses, we begin to see the face of Christ, even with people we don't know. And do you know that day, nearly $700 was donated to that crisis. And then the Christ the King Foundation gave another $1,500. So in the span of days, this congregation gave $2,000 to help in the devastation of Ebola. Another beautiful view. You see, you and I, we are stewards We are conduits of God's love when we share our gifts with others. And this is true in all of life, including our life here at Christ the King. We share it in worship. We share it in love love with God's, God's children in Sunday school. We share it in confirmation, in new member classes, in adult education. We share love through our beautiful campus, through our events and our activities. We share God's healing in Habitat, Curly's House, the Malaria Fund. We share Christ's embrace when our neighbor is in pain, in crisis, or feels forgotten. Do you see what I see? When I look out, when we share our financial gifts, our personal gifts, Right here at Christ the King, the scenery is breathtaking because we see God's love alive and shared. So together, let us receive the love come down in our Lord Jesus. Let us experience within all the gifts that we have been given and then let us share it with the world so that all might know the beauty and the wonder of Christ's love. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. (laughs) 